The AliExpress is easy. It's much easier. <laughs> Patrick is a filmmaker of note, and uh, he's going to tell you about filmmaking, and it's going to be very practical. Was uh, actually we just do some how to make a movie, a small short movie, and how to write scenes and how to shoot them. Patrick will do the shooting. And Kurt is a writer and scriptwriter, and he writes television series too. Yeah. So he's, he's, in that, and he's going to be teaching you about script structure, and how to tell a story, and really how to a scene and how you can actually take what's in your head and put it on paper so that you can get to me and you can make it Good. So the other thing is we are not teachers. So we are allowed to ask questions and to jump in so I don't understand what you mean about the book. Please, so let's get a conversation going. Otherwise, you're going to fall asleep. I don't know why you guys did last time. So we don't want to have a boring session. We want to have a working session and to really make it work. And if you have things that you don't understand, you can understand. Okay, if there's anything that you want to know which we're not telling you, you can just ask us. Okay. Movie making could be very, very complicated. Or what, like anything in life, or it could be easy. So we're going to look at a simple way of doing it. Practical will give you simple tips. I will give you simple tips about script writing. Put that in with the art of the letter. And so you can learn a few quick ways to cut through some of the crap. Um, otherwise, I have to go the long way and learn uh, my next mistakes and all that. Yesterday, we tell a story. Who comes to a book of a market movie? If you don't have a story to tell, why bother? Okay. So, a lot of people say that I make an art movie or I, I, I'm, a, I'm a serious writer. Uh, I don't write for a Sophie or whatever, whatever. I write for a Sophie. And you know what? There's a lot of um, technical stuff in that. Actually, it's quite a craft as well. I wouldn't say it's always an art. It's an art and craft, that's a different discussion. But the main thing is, even if you're making a seriously art movie, is to tell a story. As any story for telling, you lost eh? But as an accent, and I could maybe know what I could drink for the movie, what I could come to eat, and so my popcorn and eat, my popcorn and eat, and slap that. And I think you know, the slap gauge people, the people who cooked or whatever you have to tell. That's the most important. And if you're not inspired by what, by what you want to tell, forget it, baby. So, as jij dat is boring, dat is bij het boeren van. Dus het is goed opstellen. Het is kijken naar de opstellen. Als jij, ik denk, ik heb het tijd om te weten. Als je ziet de subjects die je hebt gelezen, dan denk je van, nee, het is all boring. But then find a different angle. That's a big thing we want to talk about today as well. Is that if you can find an interesting angle. And usually that's for me, I don't know what, you, what makes it a film really good. Because they say, you know, well, there are about five stories, and all those stories have been written way back by the Greeks. It's not oh, about, uh, and so there's a thing about how you look at the story. It's not about which story you tell, it's just because you have to be interested in what, what do you have to bring to that story. Yeah, and your angles. And that's what makes new people great writers or great filmmakers. They take an ordinary story, usually, and they find a different angle. Or they take something which is very complicated, uh, Inception, and they make it into a movie that all the people can watch at one level. Or if you look at Disney these days and, and Pixar and all these animated things, uh, there's nice babies for the characters and nice language jokes for the parents. So it's two levels. You are working at two levels. That's why we're lucky in this age where we're doing that. You've got uh, kiddies understand the jokes and they, they re watch the movies. So, actually, it's a good way to teach them about comedy and all that. And, the other. and the parents are entertained by the dialogue, but it doesn't influence the story. The story. Okay, what makes a good story? Quickly tell me, just randomly. What makes a good story? Shout at me. Patrick, what makes a good story? You have to talk there. A good story is something where if I am if I'm engaged by what I'm seeing the whole time, something is grabbing me the whole time and it's, it's, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm constantly guessing because I'm interested in what's going to happen. Yeah. Don't tell me. I, I see it alone, cool, you know what's going to happen. But that's a different technique because you know what's going to happen, but how is it going to happen? That's where seven lines are very clever. And in the soap, you want, people want to know what's going to happen or think they know, but it's how you get there. And then that buys you 10 more episodes. It's always, it's always giving people enough so that they know what's going on, but not enough so they actually know what's happening. So that they put 
you know, just a little more. And that's when we look at the structure of a scene in a movie. Um, if you have a scene, and at the end of the scene, people don't think what's going to happen next, or ha oh, oh, this is nice. It means that scene can be cut. You don't even have to shoot that scene, don't waste your time. You cut it off your script. But sometimes it's necessary to write the scene first, to have it before you throw it away. Um, movie making, whether it's the writing or the filming, a lot of stuff that you do, that you blood, sweat, and tears, you throw it away then. Yeah. Because we film and we film and we film and we write and we write and we write. And you've done all of this work. You might have filmed for, I mean, a film will take between two months or three months or six months to make this thing, but at the end of the day, it's only going to be 90 minutes on your screen. Or if it's a soapy, they're going to film for a whole day or two, and it's only going to be 24 minutes on the screen. You're going to write for how many days? Oh, many days. Many two days. days. Two, two days. days. You're going to write for two days. For half an hour's script. And then you're going to edit for how long? Another day. Another day. And then somebody's going to look at it and say, hey, and then you're going to cut some more of it. Yeah, and then the cheese comes, right? The editor, the script yeah. editor. Nah, but this is lost it. This is not funny. I think it's funny, the editor doesn't think it's funny. It's always, it's always about condensing things, because it's about taking a piece of life and you've got to put it into the same space and make it interesting long enough to keep it interesting so that I want to actually watch it. And then it comes to Patrick as a filmmaker and he, he cast you as the leading lady and you're having a bad day and you can't say your lines. Then he's got a problem. He's and you've got to do it 50 play. times. Yeah. <laughs> then he has to start changing sometimes the script. If it's a difficult actor, sometimes this happens. Which you will find if you make movies with your friends at school. I just said, okay, like any mood, I like any year, but I can't say like this here. So I would get say like a minute one. So it, it's a process that keeps on changing, you know, and you have to be open to it. But for me, that's what makes it exciting. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure your teachers tell you to reread your compositions or whatever. So one thing I hate at school. Uh, why do you want to read this again? Because every sentence was like, you know, get away from ground, have get terrified. But actually, that's where you start for me as a writer, where I start improving on my stuff. I can say, oh, I got lost here. I was just trying to get a link from her anger to her sadness, but then I waffled in between. So if I come back tomorrow and I read it again, oh yeah, okay, I can take all of this away and I can have just a change in one second or something. So be prepared to rewrite. Writing, they say, is rewriting. And with movies, you edit a lot. Oh, these days it doesn't end on the floor. They used to say, with, with floor with the old days, you would cut it off and it would land up on the And I mean, sometimes, you know, there's, there's a type of editing which you talk about when the actor has to do it over and over and you're trying a thing in a different way, in a different way. But then there's also when you come to documentary films where you'll film for a whole day and there'll be nothing interesting that adds to your main story so that you'll end up with just this little piece, this little gem that you see that you're going to take out of that and actually make it into a edit. Like I'm sure you over the back there aren't going to cut all of this together into one thing. It's going to be a small little piece of it. But you, you need a lot to get something good. Like um, they say if you aim for, okay I'm aiming for 60%, uh, I just want to pass this exam. If you aim for 60, probably you'll get 50. If you're not lucky, you might end up with 40. Yeah? But if you aim for 120, oh wow, you might end up with 90. So it's the same with any job. If you have lots of footage or whatever, then you can take away. It's very difficult and very expensive in movie making if you don't have enough and you have to add on. Because in the movie, it will read as value. Okay, so quality is a good story. Give it to me, what do you think is a good story? The what? shooting angles. Shooting angles, yeah. Cool. From a filmmaking and script point of view, what makes a good story? Shooting angles also good passion for just not getting bored. Yeah, not getting bored, but also at the same time shooting angles also tell you what's going on. They tell you they tell you who's in charge of the situation and who isn't in charge of the situation. If I'm shooting something from all the way down here, then and I'm looking up at them, it's they're a little bit dominating. So the person in the scene is going to be the person who's controlling things. Whereas if I'm shooting things from up top here and I'm looking down at somebody, that person is going to be the person that's being controlled. And that's subtle little things like that. You can play with how far away you are from something, if it's a wide shot, and how empty the shot feels, and how you feel about that. So each little step of the way, whether it's the shooting angles, whether it's to do with the script, whether it's to do with how long I wait within the edit to get to a certain point, or how quickly I cut to it, it all has meaning. And that's the thing with the film, is because, because you're condensing life. In life, we walk around and we look at things and we construct our meaning from our memory. And we 
put them all together. Whereas in films, we have 10 people in our audience, and the filmmaker has to control what the emotions of the audience are to get to them to the point so that when they reach the cliffhanger, they're actually afraid. When they reach the moment in the love story where the two are about to get together, they want them to get together, well, they don't. So that we're telling them what, how, what. Your camera is your observer. Huh? So the camera may comment on a happy scene, and your camera angle may actually comment on and show something different from what's actually happening around the table. So remember, when you shoot, the camera is the storyteller in a way. And often, often the writer, although it's not always that done, but often the writer can actually define it. The writer knows within a scene what's going to happen. So right at that stage, when you're coming up with your ideas, you can already start to think about what do I want to say here and how am I going to say it? If you come up with an idea, write it into your script. Somebody at later down the line, if you ever become a filmmaker, will tell you don't do that. But at this stage, do do that. But when you write now, you can actually write for the camera, how, how would I shoot this? Because you, you see the whole person. Because you can each make your own kind of movie. Okay, but now elements still of a good story. What are the basic elements of a good story? Not boring, huh? For me, number one. Interesting angle, so that links to that. Surprises, we talked about surprises. What else? The okay. characters. Characters, thank you. <laughs> yeah, as a writer, that's very important. Characters. And what kind of characters? Sorry? What kind of characters? Yes. We talk about flat characters. Oh, this is a goodie, she says, I think goodie, goodie things. People aren't like that in life. They're not hard for figures. Um, you know, the bitch in the series always needs to have a sensitive side. And you will see that in any soap or anything. Look, in a movie, it becomes, when it's Meryl Streep, you see many levels, or Robert De Niro, those, those actors like that, they can actually, the character does one thing, but you know, a lot of other things read. Very important. Rounded characters. Don't have a goody goody. Oh, the other big thing is you have a good person, good, and a bad guy. Yeah. Always, you need tension. You have to have opposites of thin stories and thin films. You've got to have somewhere where some the character is and where they're going and what's in your way. Absolutely. If it's not somebody overcoming an obstacle, it's boring. Then you think, why, why am I watching this movie? But the minute you start identifying with one of the characters, and you say, well, she's struggling to get there, then you know you've got your viewers. And then it's a rounded character. But please, nobody is only good and only bad. If you believe that in real life, that's okay, but I won't go into that. But it doesn't work in writing. People always have flaws. Because that's what makes us um, real people. People have things. And that's what makes for drama. Drama is about characters, absolutely. Situation and then character. And yeah, the good guy and the bad guy. And people uh, love to hate the bad guys. Eh? In a good soap, People wait for the bad Oh, he's going to do it again. They <laughs> wait for the bad guys. And if you write a good script, then you sort of postpone that a little bit. So the audience says, well, maybe this time he's not going to do it. But in the end, they feel quite glad. Oh, yeah, the bastard, he's done it again. So it's that kind of thing. You work with your audience expectations a little bit. Okay. So that yeah, you, you have that element of surprise. So I, I think... That, well, I want to ask them what the films were that they liked. Yes, that's a good one. Now let's see how the films that you like link with the structure of your story. So let's, I'm going to start picking you because you're not all talking. So this table over here, which um, one? Fight Club. You, you like Fight Club? Why did you like it? Um, because it's got a very good twist in it and often you didn't really see it coming and it's a lot of tension that builds up. Drama is twist and tension, huh? If you don't have a twist in your five-minute movie, why make it? Let people know from the beginning. You can show them two minutes of a slide say, please give money to, to handicap people. <laughs> but if you can make a movie of two minutes showing them a handicapped person actually doing his or her own thing and getting somewhere in life and just needing some funds to, to get there, then you have a twist and you have engaged your audience. Good fight club. That's great. You guys. Thank you. Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. Why do you like Fast and Furious? One or two. One or two. 